Dr. Sage here, back with the last of the four video lectures on prokaryotes. In this lecture, we'll briefly be describing the prokaryotes' impact on humans. So in the early 20th century, infectious diseases killed 20% of children by the age of five. Sanitation and antibiotics considerably improved the situation. In recent years, however, many bacterial diseases have appeared and reappeared. Pathogenic prokaryotes typically cause disease by releasing exotoxins or endotoxins. And some of these are potential weapons of bioterrorism. So, what is the difference? Okay, exotoxins are in a few gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. These are the toxins are small secreted proteins. In other words, the bacteria makes them and then they secrete or release them into their environment. They're toxic in very, very small amounts. They target specific organs. Okay, those are exotoxins. The other way the bacteria can cause humans harm is through endotoxins. These endotoxins occur only in gram-negative bacteria. Why only in gram-negative bacteria? Because the lipopolysaccharides that make up the outer membrane of the cell wall in the gram-negative bacteria are toxic. Now, these lipopolysaccharides are only released from the membrane whenever this bacteria is lysed, broken open, and dying. Okay, it's toxic in high doses and it causes more of a systemic effect. Okay, so there's two types of toxins from bacteria, exotoxins and endotoxins. Some examples of bacterial infections, first tuberculosis. This is from a mycobacterium, tuberculosis. It's been a problem in humans for thousands of years. It affects our respiratory system. It escapes the immune system. It's easily transferred from person to person through the air. And there's multiple drug resistance strains, which is very alarming. Another example is tooth decay. Plaque consists of bacterial biofilms. Okay, this bacteria ferments sugar to lactic acid, which then degrades the tooth enamel and causes tooth decay, or peptic ulcers. Helobacteria pylori is the main cause, and it can be treated by antibiotics. The Great Plague of London killed an estimated 200,000 people, which at the time was about 20% of the city's population. The causative agent was a bacteria that was gram-negative, rod-shaped, and was of the class gamma proteobacteria. The disease is transmitted through the bite of an infected flea, which is infected by a rodent. Symptoms include swollen lymph nodes, fever, seizure, vomiting blood, and gangrene. Another example is Lyme disease. Lyme disease often but not always results in characteristic uh, bullseye rash. The disease is caused by a gram-negative spirocete bacterium. The bacteria infects ticks, which in turn infect mice. Deer are then the preferred secondary host, but the ticks can also feed on humans. Untreated disease causes chronic disorders in the nervous system, eyes, joints, and heart. Vegetable sprouts, grown on an organic farm, were the cause of an E. coli outbreak that killed 32 people and sickened 3,800 in Germany in 2011. The strain responsible produces Shiga toxin, a substance that inhibits protein synthesis in the host cell. The toxin destroys red blood cells, whereas they should have this nice dish shape. You can see here, these are damaged red blood cells. The deformed red blood cells clog the capillaries of the kidney, which can lead to kidney failure. One way we can deal with these bacterial infections is through vaccinations. Vaccines can help to slow the spread of communicable diseases. Now, prokaryotes are not just things for us to be afraid of. They're also beneficial prokaryotes. In fact, only a small percentage of prokaryotes are pathogenic. Bacteria are vital to the environment. Decomposers release a dead organism's atoms to the environment. They also do fixation for us. So bacteria that can do photosynthesis fix carbon into sugars like glucose. The ancient cyanobacteria added oxygen to our air. That is what allows us to have the oxygen in the air that we breathe right now. Bacteria also are nitrogen fixers that reduce nitrogen gas to ammonia, which can then be utilized by living organisms. So prokaryotes play a significant role in continuously moving carbon through the biosphere. Without this, we wouldn't have the carbon that we need for essentially every molecule that we need to make. Some of the products derived from the use of prokaryotes in early biotechnology include cheese, wine, bread, beer, and yogurt. 
There are different ways a bacteria can interact with us. Symbiosis refers to the ecological relationship between different species that live in direct contact with each other. Three different types of symbiosis. Mutualism is where both parties benefit. Examples are nitrogen fixing bacteria and plant roots. We'll discuss that in detail when we cover plants. And cellulase producing bacteria and animals. Okay, so for example, termites, they can eat wood. They can't break down the cellulose, but the bacteria in their guts can break down the cellulose. Then you have commensalism, which is one, where one organism benefits and the other is unaffected. Or parasitism, which is where one organism benefits and the other is harmed. Okay, for example, tapeworms. We also have bacteria used in genetic engineering. Okay, we use bacteria as little factories for us, or biofactories, that have produced various chemicals. For example, some humans need to take insulin as an injection. Where do we get that insulin from? Well, we have bacteria make the human insulin protein for us. Bacteria are also used in bioremediation, so they can be used to remove pollutants from water, air, and soil. Here's another example. In, during the cleanup of the oil spill after the Exxon Valdez spilled in Alaska, workers hosed oil from beaches and they used a floating boom to corral the oil, which finally skimmed from the water surface. Then, some bacteria species are able to solubilize and degrade the oil. Notice we can use bacteria to break apart that oil that has been spilled into our environment. Okay, that was a very brief introduction to how prokaryotes can impact humans. Now, if you've noticed, in all four of these lectures, they've been pretty brief. We have not gone into many details. Why? Because that would take an entire course. After this course, go on and take a microbiology course. And in that course, you'll learn many more details about prokaryotes. You'll learn more categorizations of them, more about how they live and work, and about how they impact humans. But this is just a one chapter brief summary about prokaryotes. In our next chapter, we're going to start learning about the protists which is a eukaryote that can be unicellular. So until then, this has been Dr. Sage.